welcome back to NatChat, the Natalic Podcast. My name is Rob Thorne, and today we're discussing the power of analytics and insights in collaboration. Tiger have been providing workplace data analytics for over 40 years. They help IT and communications teams by providing data insights on how their telephony, unified communications and collaboration systems are being used on a day-to-day basis. So in a year that saw the vast majority of businesses move to working almost entirely remotely, how do they support businesses who need them most now more than ever? I sat down with their partner director, John Shannon, to discuss their latest developments and how they continue to elevate Microsoft and Cisco collaboration solutions across the globe. It's Thursday, January 14th. This is the Natalic Podcast. Excited to welcome to the Natalic Podcast, partner director at Tiger, John Shannon. John, how you doing, my man? I'm very well, Rob. Thank you very much. Refreshed from the festive break, I have to say. Looking forward to our conversation today. Yeah, very good. How was, how was your break? Well, it was nice. And uh, I spent quite a bit of time back up in a place, you know, you know, on the Wirral, which is where I'm from, not a million miles from where you originate from, Rob. Obviously, also very close to our, our football teams that you and I support. And we won't get too much into that because uh, I do know that you are Liverpool and I am Everton. So given that you're very much top dogs at the moment, we'll just move over that, Rob, if that's OK. But yeah, it was a good festive break back up there. And uh, I'm back in sunny Hampshire now, uh, cracking on with our FY21. Nice. Yeah, I'd actually forgotten that you were an Everton fan, to be honest. Would I? Would I've like, got an invite? You think? Or... Don't know. It wouldn't. It wouldn't have helped your chances. I'll. Uh, I'll put it that way. But it's right. all good. It's all good. It's all good. Yeah. Good. 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 So, John, um, do you want to tell little listeners a little bit about you, your background, and and what what keeps you busy on a on a day to day basis to start off with? Yeah, of course. Well. When I'm asked these questions, Rob, these days, I, I do make myself sound terribly old. And, and uh, some of the colleagues I have within Cisco, you know, we, we, we kind of shoot the breeze about this. And it's 20 plus years that I've been invo- involved in and around Cisco. So I actually started off within the partner community uh, back in 1999, working for a couple of partners, latterly uh, TNS, Total Network Solutions up there in Oswestry. Uh, again, a bit of a football link there. Uh, before they were bought by BT. And, and then before that, uh, another BT business, uh, Lynx Technology over in Yorkshire. And um, in 2006, I actually set, actually set up my own business uh, called Channel Intellect, which was predicated around the work I'd done in those years within the partner community, helping partners accelerate their growth with Cisco, owning the Cisco number and the Cisco relationship. And Channel Intellect for 12 years was all about helping uh, multiple partners, albeit on a light touch basis, just get more out of their investment with Cisco. Um, My first client was Tiger, which is relevant to our conversation today. That was back in 2006, as I said. And in 2018, uh, the owner of Tiger, Stevie McCallum, basically invited me to fold Channel Intellect into Tiger to give the business a consultancy arm. And um, that kind of really, I suppose, to your question, maps onto very much what I do Monday to Friday. The title partner director is there for a reason. You know, 80% of what Tiger does is actually through partners and, and 50% of that is Cisco partners. So obviously the, the the relationships I have, the understanding of working with a large vendor is absolutely key to how we take our story to market through and with those partners. And then the other 50% of my time uh, apart from delivering work around enablement into the partner community, is supporting our sales team. Because as we all know, nothing starts without a sale. Uh, absolutely key to growing the business. And with our new CEO, John Pickering, on board, believe you me, we have got some ambitious growth plans, I can tell you, Rob. Uh, but what we're trying to do with uh, with my knowledge is to make sure that we absolutely give our partners the best possible experience when they're working with Tiger, creating those win-wins, you know, we're both here to to enable growth for one another. So yeah, that's really Rob. What uh, what takes up my working week? It's impressive. It's impressive, man. It's uh, you know some a lot of experience there, and I think it's uh, it definitely shows. I think the listeners will definitely uh, definitely see that you've got you guys have got a lot to offer as well. Um, a lot of mention of other partners there as well. I might have to bleep the the names of those others those other guys out. I just um, so I suppose some some really useful context then um, would be. Tiger have got a really interesting story, right? So in terms of the gap in the market that you guys fill, uh, the clients that we work together on absolutely love you, can't get enough of you guys. But I I know that some of our listeners might not have even heard of you guys and and what you bring, even though you've been in the game for over 40 years now, which um, is mightily impressive. Um, So analytics, intelligence, data, all things that 
major vendors like Cisco and Microsoft offer nowadays. So talk to me a little bit about Tiger, um, where you guys have been successful in complementing, elevating those collaboration tools um, and the teams that support them as well. Yeah, absolutely, Rob. So there is a long legacy uh, and, and it goes back, um, uh, as you say, uh, over 40 years now in those early days. Uh, and perhaps, you know, that, that this has shaped a little bit about what what uh, people think of Tiger right now is, is just around call recording, uh, just around uh, basically, you know, old fashioned telephony. What we are about, uh, and, and I suppose one of the phrases you'll see if you do visit our website, tiger.io, is very much around we love data. You know, and our workplace data analytics software, which is fundamentally both where we are now, where our direction of travel lies, essentially captures the patterns and changes in, in the data that's generated by a, a, a business's telephony or unified comms and collaboration systems. And ultimately, what we then do, having captured this data, is absolutely use it to inform uh, organizations to make more intelligent business decisions. Very much, Rob, transforming how they work and collaborate. Uh, across their voice, video, messaging, and confer conferencing platforms, so it has been interesting. We have had, uh, and, and you know, very much uh, over the past year or so, as we've gone through this extensive reband and, and repositioning of Tiger, update the market, update our partners, update our vendors about absolutely what Tiger is about. Because on the one hand, you, you're absolutely right that pedigree. That longevity is something that helps differentiate us. But absolutely, you know, we have had to put in a, a, an awful lot of work <laughs> to explain to the market of absolutely what we can offer them and make sure, obviously, that they're also aware of just how important this is as we move into this next normal that, that we're all talking about following the pandemic. Yeah, that's great. And and I think, again, the, the, the value that you guys bring, I think, more than anything, again, is is almost supporting those IT teams because I think I, I had an interesting conversation on, on one of the other podcasts that we did with uh, Mike Danson, our, our CEO, talking about the effect or maybe the responsibility that IT had to, to be able to respond to to the pandemic, to be able to enable people to become a bit more agile, to be able to work from home and things like that. And I think that's the fascinating part about what Tiger do compared to some of the other partners and strategic partners that we work with, whereas you almost elevate and allow them to do their work a little bit better right make more informed decisions and things like that so um on to, to that point i mean do you think do you think i mean how how is how has 2020 been for you i mean how has the conversation changed almost that you're having with 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 clients or i suppose you're having with partners but almost ultimately you know tiger having with with clients and, and things like that how is it how has it been how have you seen the conversation change yeah it's a great question rob and, and like any anyone you ask that question to within business and indeed personal life clearly it's been a a challenging year uh and and one you know f fundamentally that we've just had to get on with and, and you know w one of my key themes uh in my life personally and professionally is about you just got to keep going so i know as a board you know we sat down uh as, uh, as a group uh towards the end of march as things were evolving and obviously i i think one of the key reflections on 2020 is about adaptive leadership you know, uh, what you thought was going to be relevant at the end of March wasn't by mid-April. What you planned to do in mid-May subsequently had to change in July. Uh, and, and I think, you know, fundamentally, yes, you stick to your knitting. But we have all, as, uh, as organizations, had to adapt to, to the picture that, that has emerged in front of us, which has been an ever-evolving battle picture for sure. Interestingly, you know, we got the year off to, to a great start. Uh, I mentioned earlier about John Pickering, obviously so successful at Block, uh, joining us uh, and, and coming in as our CEO. So we've had uh, a bunch of work that we set out to do. And I, I think that will be one of my key takeaways is about whilst there has been uh, a prevailing uh, uh, process of change going on uh, in and around the pandemic, we have managed to re remain very focused as a business. So we've absolutely understood about the changes we want to do in terms of how our look and feel, our branding and all of those good things. Uh, uh, John put in place a bunch of strategic uh, work streams that we as a board needed to carry out and cascade across the business. We have stuck in or in part to those. But I think, again, you know, one of the, the key takeaways for businesses this year, the one of the key learnings, which is going to have an impact uh, for sure for the medium term, is about the change in the working environment. And we've had to be as a leadership team right across uh, the issue of a, a distributed hybrid workforce uh, and looking then about from from their perspective, those issues around well-being. Uh, and, and, you know, that's been probably uh, one of the key things certainly I have been involved in within Tiger is in ensuring that our team, we, we, we have uh, in order of 42 people working for the business, making sure that they remain connected 
making sure that they are motivated, uh, making sure that they maintain uh, uh, their, their focus. So that's been a key, a key uh, challenge uh, and indeed positive outcome that we generated across 2020 for sure, Rob. Yeah, and very pertinent as well, considering, you know, at the time of recording, just having gone into our third lockdown, I think it is now. Yeah, down to least yeah. Yeah, that's right, Rob. And, and, and I suppose, you know, what, 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 to some extent, we are driven by um, the, the, the activities, you know, you, you do a little bit of slipstreaming around these large vendors. Uh, and Cisco, ha- as an organization for many years, have been very much into uh, making sure that their, their, their teams globally are, are looked after. But I actually attended a, an event, obviously a virtual one recently, where they introduced their, their global head of well-being. You know, they've now seen it sufficiently important as a corporate initiative uh, to appoint somebody who's going to lead them in that. And the stuff that that that, that uh, she was able to convey to us, to some extent, uh, did ratify uh, what we had been trying to do within our small organization. Uh, but by the same token, gave us a whole bunch of ideas about what else we need to do. And to your point, it is about going again on this because we are going to be facing, I don't know, whatever you want to call about it, 2nd of April's Good Friday, Easter. That's where I'm kind of thinking, you know, if we're out of it by then, <laughs> we would have done well. Uh, but if it comes sure thinking, yeah. exactly, if it comes forward from that, it, it, even better. But we are going to have to just keep our, 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 our you know, the, 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 the focus around ensuring that, that our teams feel empowered and connected and contributing to what we're doing. Yeah, yeah, 100% agree. And and to, to come back onto one of your earlier points as well, I think, you know, we're in the midst of a, a rebranding or refining of our message as well and, and making sure that, you know, our go-to-market strategy meets all of that. And it's, um, yeah, a lot of sympathy for you. It's uh, it's it's no easy task as we're, we're starting to find, I think. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And, um, you know, and again, pro- probably one thing that, that I, I would want to convey in terms of, you know, making sure that we're not distracted as organizations. We have a major release coming out around Microsoft uh, as we update our product, make it more on point for, for, for the world that we face for, for, from a business perspective. We, we have managed to do that yeah, with, with, within the con- confines of a distributed workforce and all of those good things. So, again, it's about not getting too downheartened, uh, down, uh, downbeat about the whole thing and just saying, look, you know, it is what it is. We're, we're, we're going to get on with it. And at the end of the day, always remembering you've got customers at the end of all this uh, and they need servicing, they need help. So so that's been key. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and in, in terms of those type of conversations that you're having with, uh, with, your, with your customers and, you know, the, the developing message, I mean, how is that? Is, is there anything changed there? Is there anything specific that you'd call out in 2020 that was particularly, again, interesting or any standout cases that might be worth talking about? Again, I'm just trying to provide almost some some context to the listeners just to maybe try and to, uh, to contextualize um, sort of, again, what you guys are doing and the kind of transformational outcomes that you're, you're bringing to your, well, yeah. your and our customers, I suppose. Yeah, absolutely. So, so I think, you know, uh, it's probably worth mentioning, Rob, that sometimes tech, big tech gets a, a bad reputation uh, within the marketplace, you know, for the different things we do or don't do. Um, I think some of the solutions that have been provided that have been all across the press, but Cisco partners, Cisco have been very much involved in it, whether it's been obviously um, um, the the uh, centre, the Nightingale Centre in, 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 in London, how quickly that was deployed. Uh, and Tiger in its own way, we, we have quite a lot of healthcare end users. And, and obviously, as they have faced uh, their biggest challenge, undoubtedly, as organizations and as entities, uh, uh, again, they've gone down the hybrid route to some extent from a, a, a back office perspective uh, as, as their teams have, have left uh, their, their normal places of work. We have absolutely had to be uh, front and center in supporting them to make sure that the back office has supported the tremendous efforts of our key workers within uh, the NHS you know, that hasn't been dissipated in any way by, by the actual organizational aspects of what they do uh, falling down. And, and I think, you know, again, whilst that has been driven by the pandemic itself, one thing we also found um, was that people are still spending, you know, entities are having to adapt to this new uh, uh, way of working, this, this work from anywhere concept. They have therefore had to invest. So we have found uh, within finance, for example, as a market vertical, that organizations have invested and invested quite heavily, not just uh, in, in terms of actually responding to the pandemic, but also general work general uh, initiatives and projects, Rob, that they had underway. Again, they've kept their focus, stuck by them. And very much the word I would use here, I've seen in the market resilience. Resilience in in terms of not folding, keeping on, not losing sight of where their their destinations are, what they need to do as organisations and making those investments. Yeah, that that matches up with a lot of the conversations that we're having as well. I mean, I would... 
I would certainly anticipate, I know the type of conversations that we've been having certainly towards the last quarter of last year and now are the what comes next. And I think what comes next for everyone, I mean, this is not news to anyone, but again, just a rethinking about how we work and remote working becoming more prevalent. And I think alongside that, that's where things like analytics and the giving giving IT teams the tools to be able to see and help um, remotely are going to be absolutely crucial. And I think that's definitely, you guys are going to have a, a big part to play in that as well. Yeah. And do you know what's been interesting, Rob? One of the key pieces of feedback we've got, one of the key areas of focus we, we, we've been asked uh, to, to make sure that we keep an eye on is, is just making sure uh, that organizations are, that the different parts of those organizations are, are talking. They're checking in on one another, they're collaborating. And, and of course, you know, Tiger's uh, software is very much on point with, with all of that um, because. Uh, for management, you know, making sure that, that people are not getting siloed, they're not getting left behind. Uh, you, you know, it's all very well having this infrastructure. It's making sure and, 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 and being, I suppose, diligent that people are actually using it. Because, again, those issues around well-being and such like and so forth are so key uh, from, from a corporate responsibility perspective. You know, it's great that Tiger is able to offer our, our, our customers that kind of uh, information. I think so. I think so. Definitely. Well, Talking about quite a, a wide array of things there, but I mean, what what would you say and and yeah. what, what's next for Tiger as we look into twenty twenty one? I'm sure you've done your your planning um, for the next year, but what um, what what should we look out for? What or what what's the direction of travel? Should I say um, in terms yeah. of where you guys are taking your taking business moving forward? Yeah, absolutely. So I, I guess the first thing would would be uh, check out our new website. There's such a lot of time and effort and resource went into that Tiger.io. Uh, and you'll see just this new look and feel, this new tiger. Uh, you, you, you'll see our five corporate values in there and such like and so forth. Perhaps give people a, a real feel about what we are as a business, Rob. I think in terms of our, our, our direction of travel from a business perspective, it's absolutely to, to learn uh, as we move forward around the different vendors that we work with. Um, uh, absolutely where their offerings are headed in response to what we've seen uh, over the past nearly uh, a year now, heaven help us. Um, so we've made sure that we have stayed relevant. And, you know, that, that word relevant is something that John Pickering's absolutely calling out all the time. We've got to make sure to our customers and prospects, obviously, that, that we remain relevant. I think the other thing, though, uh, fundamentally, uh, Rob, we have had a lot of feedback that our customers have been delighted with the fact that all of us, you know, every man jack in the business has stood by our customers because clearly they've all had, uh, uh, you know, um, good, bad and different experiences through pan the pandemic. And I think those relationships, you know, I I I'm very much a relationship person. Those relationships uh, have uh, been, been absolutely key uh, to being seen to be uh, standing next to our customers. Uh, they're, they're key to where we're headed with them and such like and so forth. So, so that, that, that's been um, a, a, a real uh, uh, uptick, uh, you know, a real tick uh, in the box for us as an organization. And I think fundamentally, the, the other side of it as well is that we, 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 we generally see an opportunity for, for, for technology. You know, we spoke about it a couple of minutes ago to absolutely make the, the, the world of work and indeed people's personal lives, you know, that much better through the different things that we offer. Uh, fundamentally, it is what it is. You know, who, who knows what the city of London will ever be like again or what large corporate offices will be like and campuses and such like and so forth. Well, OK, you know, there's people further up the pay grade than me will kind of make those decisions. But, but, but fundamentally, you know, Tiger's going to be here for our customers uh, and obviously for, for the new emerging uh, um, uh, prospects that we convert into customers uh, to make sure that we're supporting what they do as organizations. Yeah, that's good to hear. And uh, I agree. I'm fascinated to see where it is. And I've kind of drawn the short end of the stick a little bit, having moved right in the midst of the pandemic back in May to central London to get a bit close to the office that we've uh, all been <laughs> switched through from work remotely so uh, it's not worked out too well for me but hey that's not uh, it's not what the main decisions are being made up on based on yeah that. yeah well, it's, it's interesting because of course we have had quite a bit of uh, feedback for, from you big city dwellers obviously tiger based in uh, little old ringwood in hampshire you know it's been a little past us by somewhat uh, from that perspective but uh, yeah we'll, we'll just have to see what happens to cities i mean look london has survived what the the, the plague the fire the blitz I, I mean come on it'll be fine yeah the pandemic next well it's a good note to end on so uh, thank you very much for your time john really insightful um so if anyone would like any more information on tiger um we'll be including links to a recent webinar that you guys did in the the description of the show um would also draw people towards your website tiger.io as well but um 
yeah otherwise thanks again for your time john absolute pleasure yeah great good to speak to you rob and um you know best of luck in in 2021 for for, for natillic and uh hope to speak to you again soon you too thanks again man cheers thanks for listening to nat chat the natillic podcast please subscribe to the natillic podcast on spotify apple music or wherever you get your podcasts and leave us a review while you're there it really helps us improve and grow the show Please note that opinions expressed on the Natillic podcast are those of the hosts or our guests, not the organisations that they represent. You can find more information on Natillic on our website, that's natillic.com. You can also find us on social media. On Twitter, we're at Natillic Group, as well as Facebook and LinkedIn. Our theme music was provided by Dan Shaw, who you can find at Danza, that's D-A-N-Z-R, on music streaming services. This is Rob Thor, and thanks again for listening.